Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. This week's whole show comes from the south of England, an episode dedicated to southern manufacturing. So here's what's coming up. I challenged the guys to find me the best highlights from the show and boy did they deliver. Sit back, relax and hold tight because this show is fast paced, informative and funny. So let's see what they came up with. Ian, this is a little bit different. What have we actually got here uh, from White House Machine Tools that you're showing? Um, we've got the feeder, which is attached to the MX140 X2. Uh, so basically what we're doing, it's um, a fully automated system. So we're putting, we're putting parts on here. So the, these are obviously castings. And then out of the bottom conveyor is coming, is the finished component. But how do I know where to put these? I mean, can I just drop it there and, and the machine will automatically pick it up and put it into the, uh, into the brother machine? Um, on these parts here, you just literally can just drop them on the conveyor within a parameter what we set on the machine. This component's been set up to a 30 degree either way, so we can rotate it either way. Um, but we can open that right up and then the camera system will recognize features for the jaws to clamp onto it. And when you look at a, a solution like this, this is an ideal application, isn't it? Something like a casting, which has maybe got uh, a few irregularities about it. Yeah, yeah um, obviously castings are a lot easier to program on here, but we can actually put uh, solid material on here, solid billets as well. We can program that off that as well. So. So, yeah. and, and when you take the Brother machine, I mean, I'm not surprised they've introduced this video uh, automation solution because the machines are so fast, you need to keep feeding them, don't you? I suppose that's why they've called it this. Yeah, that's right, we need to keep feeding them. And obviously with the robots, the robot never tires and obviously you have an operator on there, you just can't keep up with the speed of the machines because they're so quick. And, and can you fit this video solution to any of the Brother products? Is it easy to do? Could you retrofit it to a machine? These are some things that brother, uh, brother users may be thinking. Um, yeah, we can retrofit it this um, to any of the machines. Um, it will fit to any of the brother ranges. So with the, you know, if it's twin pallet or the single pallet machines, they can be fitted to them. So yeah, I'm here at Southern Manufacturing on the Blue Nova Test stand. And David, what on earth is the lube about? Uh, yeah, this. Uh, it's a unique way of showing uh, uh, how the probe behaves in a, in a machine tool. Everyone will always say to us, a probe, it's great, it's wonderful if it's all nice and clean, but in a machine tool, it's a dirty environment, there's coolant, there's swarf, how, how's the probe going to perform? So we had this idea of showing really, put a, t a tub of grease on the table, probe apart, clean, and get a set of results, then dip it in the grease, and that probed the same features and we showed that the probe is just as accurate, no loss of accuracy at all because of any contamination in there. Yeah, quite a good, unique idea. So there we are guys, that's what the grease is for and I know you love your grease, Colin. We popped in to see the guys at Zeiss out. Now if I'm, I'm thinking Zeiss, I'm thinking lenses, microscopes, metrology, but what's this? Well, this is part of that same suite, so you're right, I mean, Zeiss is known for precision imaging, uh, precision measurements. Part of that suite is moving from looking at surfaces to looking at interior structures as well. So this is a CT scanner. Right. Works in the same way as a hospital CT scanner. Okay, so when um, I've broken my leg, I go in, they'll scan me, this is the same sort of technology? Exactly the same technology, yep. So it's using x-rays to penetrate through the material. Main difference here, of course, is the part is no longer your leg but it's a part that's either, uh, let's say, a plastic part that's been uh, molded, or what we see a lot of is additive manufactured parts, of course. Okay. So when you're interested in understanding what the internal structure is uh, of a part that's been uh, 3D printed, yep. you don't have direct access to what's going on inside, of course. So you can't see what that internal structure is. And you need a technology like CT that uses X-rays to penetrate through 
see the internal structures, see the internal defects, uh, and model that in the same way as you would uh, with a traditional conventional uh, CT, uh, sorry, a CMM okay. system. You can use all the traditional metrology software with that, get measurements, dimensions, uh, and so on. So something different that I haven't seen at an exhibition uh, in recent years. Anyway, Mark, this is a Matsura MX850. What are you actually showing visitors this week at Southern Manufacturing? Well, we believe it's the first time in the UK that we've actually shown the capabilities of a 3D printing machine and what it can actually achieve in producing fixtures for our CNC machine tools. So we're, we're machining a component, an aluminium part, but it's been yep. supported and secured and held using a, a product that you've printed on your HP machine. That's, that's correct, yeah. So are, are there any drawbacks to this? Uh, we haven't found any, to be fair. I mean, some of the major uh, advantages of this are the fact that you can produce uh, a fixture for your machine tool overnight rather than having a long protracted uh, lead time for manufacturing your fixtures. Um, I would suggest, yeah, most a lot of tool makers might, might quote you weeks days, weeks to make a yeah, fixture. Sure. You can now turn this around literally. I mean, this this particular example here, how long did this take to print? Uh, it, this was printed overnight. So the lead time is is, is very short indeed. Uh, very short indeed. If someone was to question then the integrity of the component, w would they be right or wrong? Uh, you can you can test it for sure. I mean, do you want to stand on it? Okay, I'll, I'll do that. Let me just <laughs> test it. Right. So if I stand on this, you can evidently see it takes my weight, which is uh, I think it's just over 11 stone these days, uh, if I'm lucky. But it has been uh, something that people have been really interested in here. And not only just here, you've sold this solution into one of your customers, haven't you? Yes, we have a, a customer uh, in the north of England that has this exact machine, an MX850. Uh, quick turnaround, small batch components, and he suffered from long lead times with fixtures. So he, bought, he purchased a, a HP 3D printer um, and he prints fixtures overnight. Makes perfect sense to me. Thank you, Mark. It certainly does. We've managed to get an exclusive with Filmstar, I suppose. Regular on ITV, is that right? Uh, yeah, I've been on the telly a little bit recently. <laughs> so we'll be getting autographs later. Now, Tim, MJ Allen Group, a regular on MTD Network, on Talk of Chips. Three things I want to cover off now. Investment, what have you been up to? Uh, investment. So we bought a couple of Dugard machines, some vertical uh, box slide uh, milling machines, uh, two metres by one point one by point nine uh, or thereabouts. thereabouts. Now Tim had to get that right because what tested you earlier didn't I? I put you under pressure. You did put me under pressure and I was <laughs> under pressure that time as well but nice heavy duty uh, machining sensors for machining the castings. Yep. And just to clarify as well if you haven't seen the video in-house foundry castings. In-house foundry castings so we cast aluminium, we cast iron, we cast bronze Biggish lumps, we can cast a gross weight. What are you calling a big lumps? <laughs> I would never be so rude. Uh, close to three tons in iron, a ton in aluminium, yeah. uh, and we machine those components in our own machine shop. So it's a one stop shop, one site facility. Now, there's a theme I think going on with engineers at the moment onshoring. Are you finding that's happening with you guys? Yeah, we absolutely are. Um, we've seen for a while people coming back from places like China. Uh, but more recently we've seen people coming back, in fact this, at this show we've seen two inquiries that are repatriating goods from Italy. Oh. So there is signs of both being very busy in the industry but also goods coming back from overseas. Right, excellent. So it's excellent for Engineering UK and yourselves obviously. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean we've always exported, about a third of our goods go overseas yeah. and uh, we see that trend continuing. Exchange rate obviously helps. We, you know, UK manufacturing is competitive and it's good, uh, so I think that's attractive. So guys, this week we've got a super impressive cycle time challenge. It's actually an aerospace bliss. I'm here with Graham Hogg from Quick Grind. Talk us through it, Graham. Hi. Here we have uh, a Blisk, an aerospace part, as you were saying. We're using our uh, latest Cayman high performance cutters to do all the roughing out work. Um, long nose, ball nose, getting down the bottom. And the barrel tool is what gives you the quickest cycle time saving. It has uh, absolutely fabulous time saving. So. Uh, this part is actually just done in one hit as well. There we are. So this week's Cycle Time Challenge, Aerospace Blisk, made of aluminium. Bear in mind, it's using open mind software and conical barrel tools. Kelvin, LNS, I'm thinking bar feeds. Yep, bar feeds. So LNS started out with the bar feed, which is the core product of our group but through acquisition we have built now our one-stop shop, OSS as we call it, which now encompasses feeding the bars in, 
helping to manufacture the products within the lathe, high pressure coolant, mist extraction, to swarf evacuation into the drum at the other side. So it's a complete process. So the OSS, the whole solution basically? Yep, it's the whole solution. Now, one thing you're showcasing here is the swarf conveyor. What's so special about this one? This is the SFC. Everyone knows of the drum filtration, microfine two and three system that we do, 50 micron. But as we got here, this is two thirds of the footprint, but also the price. Oh, I can say, so, so two thirds of footprint, it's definitely two thirds of price though. Yes, it, it is. So when people are buying big drum systems, additional coolant tanks, a majority of the time and high percentages, this will fit in the original tank. So, you can go from a clean eight type uh, conveyor to straight to a, a filtration conveyor that you don't clean it, it's self cleaning. So, downtime, minimal, uptime on spindle, maximum. Yeah. Money, make money. So, how was your breakfast at lunchtime, Gareth? Fantastic, can't beat a bit of German sausage, can you? <laughs> you still got a bit of mustard on your lips. <laughs> oh, oh, we're on, we're on, right. Okay, so uh, we've seen this product before, but it's it's been out about a year now, but it is an innovation that I think uh, engineers should know about. Um, we're on the Tame Work Holding Stand. This is a, lang well, you guys, I'll tell you what, start with you, Danny. You tell us what this product is. Um, so this is the Multiphase 3. Uh, we've, we've done a bit of market research and looked at the common machines out there in the marketplace and developed this to, to try and work with the kinematics of, of the most common machine tools. So we're talking about a five axis machine here. This is obviously going to be located on the table, which allows you to do what, Gareth? What's the key benefit? There's a couple of be benefits really. You've got multi-loading, uh, so you can have three parts on the table, uh, lots of advantages, machining, obviously less tool changes. Uh, it gives you good access to all parts, so that, as Danny says, the way that it's, it's designed, it allows access by the tools to, to all faces of, of, your, of your component. Uh, what about the, um, the actual securing of, uh, call it the base to a machine though, Danny? You talk about the different uh, machines you've looked at the kinematics and so forth how does it actually secure itself to the table um, so we actually use the 96 uh, pitch lang studs in the bottom of this however we can drill it to suit your t-slots or, or whatever you have in the table if you need to but most customers um, have 96 lang plates now so it just goes straight on and also it quickly can be taken on and off and, and other things can be put on there I can see advantages uh, in, in abundance here really. Probably my final question for you Gareth, uh, security of this part when you're clamping, looks like you're clamping on minimal material, how, how am I going to be assured that that's not going to come out the uh, come out the vise? Uh, well we're using the painted Lang stamping system, uh, it's been around for many many years now, you stamp your component into the vise, as long as you talk the vise up you're guaranteed that the part's going to stay where it is. Good stuff available from Tame Work Holding. Danny, have you had a sausage yet or are you about to go now? About to go, Grant. About to go. Well, I'm going to have one too. We're always looking for new innovation at MTD CNC and here at Southern Manufacturing, we're here with Tom at MIE Solutions. Now, you guys have just developed a, a brand new app. Can you tell us why? Of course. So, first off, it's the Android application that we offer. So, it's the first Android based application. We've never sort of done that in the past. All of our applications have been Windows based, so it gives an alternative in that respect. And the idea of the app really is to give, I guess, functionality or extra functionality to the shop floor. Um, so, it will enable shop floor operatives to do things such as inventory movements through it. They can also receive goods in from suppliers. They can do things such as packing lists. They can raise delivery notes from the, from the system as well. Um, and it also enables people, especially especially for users of ours that have a lot of site work, they can have people on the site actually book on and off the jobs and that would then feed back into the main system so they can quite easily see how they're getting on with the jobs that they're working on. And the demands in manufacturing these days, it does sort of push uh, companies down the sort of lights out engineering route and I presume this app is perfect for that? Exactly that, yeah, it just opens up all those doors. Can they have a free demo from you? Of course, by all means, yeah, for anyone that is interested, whether they be prospective or current customer, please do feel free to get in touch. Now, just over our, sho our shoulders here, LF, we, we all know about LFE, if I can say it probably, low frequency vibration. I'm not going to talk about that today, but one thing I have noticed on this video, got a bit of laser cutting going on there. Laser cutting, so that's a new concept for us. We're, we're mounting a, a laser and integrating it to the machine, so for thin walled components, a big application is the medical industry, things like stents. But it's like with all things, there's a lot of applications across the industry where when you've got thin walled components that you can't pick up, you want to produce it in one operation off of a machine and the laser integrated to one of our sliding head machines. Can we just look in the camera, Dave? Is it recording? 
that, is it recording, do you reckon? Let me see. Oh, here we go, here we go, look at this. Look, right, okay, here we go. So look, Chris is actually learning about uh, chucks here. Dave, what is this? I think what, what Andy's trying to do is teach him how to use the uh, the college chirp. He obviously doesn't know much about Chris because we've tried to teach him things for many years and he doesn't grasp things very quickly. I've got to tell you, it's, 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 Andy's Andy. pretty good at this. If he can't teach him, no one can. So what is he doing at the moment? Picking up he's his... Putting the, putting the gun in the collet and he's got to line it all up just to release it inside the chuck. That's sweet, yeah. Pull your trigger. And there hey, we go. That's wow, it. Well done, Chris. Chris did he, you are an expert. Did we catch all that on camera? Hopefully I wasn't in the way. Oh, well done. Look, Chris, he, he's done it. He's done it. No. There he was. Take it back out again. How popular is this, Chuck, Dave? Extremely. Yeah. Extremely, yeah. I think we've done extremely well with it. All the machine tool companies use it. It's quick. It's easy. Predictable. Accurate. What more do you want? And, he, and even he can use it. And even Chris can use it. it. Chris, you won our today's first prize, a high book pen. Thank you for watching and remember, if you've got an event, open day, an exhibition in the UK or overseas, the Swarf and Chip Show is the ideal platform to promote it. So next week I've got the guys back here in the studio and coming up in that show we visit CW Fletcher in Sheffield, we're at Hydrofeed in Milton Keynes and we have a bumper special offer from Ward High Tech. So join us same time next week and in the meantime like, comment and subscribe and as we always say keep those spindles turning. <laughs>